What up guys and welcome to this brand new video and welcome to this brand new series. Today we're gonna talk about the first stock in the logistics series and if you want to know more about logistics and especially stocks that profit from the massive growth in e-commerce make sure you subscribe to my channel. After you did that you may continue watching this video. So today we're going to talk about Deutsche Post DHL Group and the reason why I'm doing this is pretty much actually I've never thought about making a video about Deutsche Post DHL Group but we talked in uni about this today and I thought well actually it's a quite nice talk it's a really interesting business model bringing stuff from A to B and there are a few other companies that are quite interesting to talk about and I thought well let's start with Deutsche Post DHL as the first company to talk about and from here let's go straight into their investor presentation March 2022 content DP DP DHL group highlights strategy 2025 and financial backup so we're going to start with the first thing on a new level so resilient e-commerce drives GDP growth at sustainable high earnings level this is true especially due to the massive growth in e-commerce that started when Corona really kicked in companies like DHL, FedEx, UPS, you name it, really profited from that massive growth in e-commerce. Then significantly increased sustainable free cash flow. I love that. Industry leading cemented by strong strategy focus on digitalization and ESG. Well, not much to say. Again, as with all my videos, you know, ESG, in my opinion, is just a lot of talking with nothing behind it. But it's important talking because everybody wants to talk about it. Financial highlights, record EBIT of 8 billion 2021. Strong free cash flow of 4.1 billion driven by business growth. Love it. Dividend increase by 33%, 1 euro 80 per share and 2 billion euros share buyback program. One thing with the dividend increasement. Due to the fact that inflation is really high, really, really big thing nowadays, today is 40 March 2021, 2022, also I won't be uploading that video so soon. But a 33% increase in the dividend is a really nice thing if inflation is below days, 33%. So one thing to hedge against inflation might be to take a look at dividend companies that are growing their dividends by a rather high speed. And 33% is quite solid for a dividend increasement. Business to client development in 2022-2021 peak season. So we can see lovely growth rates, 13%, 19% and 13%. Business to business development, Q4 2021 versus Q4 2019. And there we can see growth, but not as much growth as in this area. EBIT to free cash flow, EBIT almost 8 billion, operating cash flow almost 10 billion, and the free cash flow 4 billion. Well, nice. Financial outlook. Well, outlooks are bullshit because no one can predict tomorrow. Investment into organic growth. Priority remains profitable organic growth. Yeah, that is good. Continued investment into profitable growth. Well, lovely. I love CapEx because CapEx is, if doing in the right way, just cash printing, but it has to be done in the right way. Group Rock trending further up. Nice, nice. I really, really love that. Dividend, so we can see the dividend increase to 1 euro 80. Uh, we can see, which is quite typical for a German dividend payer. In Germany, companies don't really care whether the dividend is increased or it's flat or even decreased. It's totally different to the United States. So in Germany, something like that is totally normal, where the dividend just pretty much remains the same three years in a row. 
no big surprise. So if you if you want to buy a company that is like really focusing on paying you out a safe dividend, I would not recommend any German company. Strategy 2025. So let's take a look at what DHL is about to do in the future. As an internal part of our strategy, sustainability is entered along our three bottom lines. Well, you've got to admit that this is total bullshit because we all know e-commerce is way, way more fucked up for the planet than normal commerce in your local shop. But they try. They really try, so... Let's give him that point. DPD group, e-commerce share of group. So they assume that the, or not they assume, but the e-commerce share of the group revenue increased dramatically. And we expect that to continue and probably even go up. Accelerate digitalization, driving performance improvements in all divisions. So this is true. So especially in logistics, guys, digitalization can do a hell lot of things and especially AI so because logistics is basically really fucked up business I mean you've got to bring one good from A to B total manageable but doing it with thousands and thousands and thousands of goods makes it pretty damn complicated and somehow they manage to get it done and I'm really, really impressed by that. And I'm feeling pretty sorry for all of these drivers, by the way. Just, I really want to say that. Um, that, I mean, they get sh shit, they, they get paid shit money and have a really fucked up, stressful job. So I'm really sorry for them. And I think it shouldn't be done the way it is because, but there's another topic. Let's not talk about that. Back to digitalization. And if AI, for example, can increase the productivity of just one of these logistics hubs by i don't know 10 or 20 percent this is massive it's massive so digitalization is a big thing in logistics and that's basically what dhl is doing it's a logistics company we can see that the revenue is definitely growing um german letter is decreasing asset light cynical driven by global trade all right and yeah e-commerce e solutions parcels in germany yeah like my dad he's selling stuff on ebay like there is no tomorrow and then he's sending these parcels all over the place diversified resilient investment with e-commerce growth upside dl express they are global forward freight they have a supply chain they are I don't quite know what that is, but I know what Express is, and I love DHL Express, by the way. Division Deep Dives, DHL Express, um, Revenue Mix, Time Defined International, Day Defined International, Time Defined Domestic, yeah. So basically, um, Global Time Defined Market Share. Oh, they're the largest, love that. If you take a look at that map here, these are the logistics hubs from where they send stuff from A to B, and I think, I think logistics is, by the way, is a really fascinating thing, but also a really fucked up thing because you've got to bring all these things from A to B. and uh, Kind of impressive, but weird at the same time. But, I mean, isn't that fascinating? And we can send something from LAX to, I don't know, daily within a day or even less. I think that's fascinating, to be honest. Global forward freight. So, air freight, ocean freight. I think this refers to them basically shipping goods we are a massive ship i'll also talk about a few shipping companies in that logistics here so really make sure you subscribe to my channel so that you won't miss these videos because one of those companies paid us out a hundred percent dividend year and that's really impressive the other supply chain manage supply chains to reduce complexity for our customers about supply chains i kind of doubt it to be honest Due to the fact that, how shall I say, literally anything is fucked up nowadays with the supply chain. So, yeah, again, we're talking March 2022. We are the number one contract logistics player. I love that. It's nice. That's really nice. The supply chain is uniquely positioned to cater for the structural growth of e-commerce and 
omnichannel demand global. What I'm saying is if you believe the whole investment case for DHL is this is a company that moves goods from A to B. That's it. And if you believe that more and more things are going to ship from A to B within the future, DHL is your stock to pick as a logistics stock. Yeah, sure, there are other stocks and we're going to talk about them, but they are, it's one of those stocks where you can say, okay, their job is to get things from A to B. And they're quite good at that. And if you don't believe in that, you should probably not invest in a logistics company. Now here we can see that e-commerce, Europe is quite dominant for their e-commerce revenue. Let's talk a bit about numbers. Revenue again, almost 80 billion, 81 billion, a bit almost 8 billion, a bit on margin, almost 8%. What is quite interesting is to see how large the margins are at the Express compared to the other areas. For example, they have a supply chain, just 5% margins, but they have express 17% margins. So what I would love them to do is concentrate on that DHL express thing. I assume that within the near future, especially express, it's going to be way more important than it was just five years ago. But I might be totally wrong. And actually, it's way more likely that I'm totally wrong than I, that I'm right. So here we can see 2020 compared to 2021, solid numbers. Here are a few more numbers, even more solid, love it. You can see really strong balance sheet, I really love that. That's really solid balance sheet, I really, really love that. From here, let's just take a look at the stock. So guys, this is a long-term chart. All in all, you can see every time there's an economic downturn like at the beginning of the 2000s or at the 2008 financial crisis or here in Corona or here at the trade war, United States with China. You can see obviously logistics stocks are fucked up harder than other companies. But if you take a look at the daily chart, you can see rather, rather steep decrease since September. Uh, especially the Ukraine war. Fuck Russia, not Russia, but fuck Putin and maybe Russia, like those idiots in Russia that support Putin. And the Ukraine war definitely gave that stock a hard time. But on the other side, if you invested back in COVID, like for example, somewhere here at 20 euro, you would have 18% dividend yield now. So it's quite lovely. Again, all in all, one more thing to mention, by the way, is the German state owns, still owns 20% of the company. So that might be something you should be aware of. All in all, there isn't anything more to say. I am not invested in the A good friend of mine, he's invested in the A but I have no intention to invest. I honestly don't know why he's invested, to be honest. I've never talked about him. I only know that he is invested. I hope you like the first part of the logistics series. We're going to talk about a few more stocks in the near future. So make sure you subscribe and see you soon, guys. Bye.